Hey, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to the channel. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Big Ball Vlogs. I do reviews, comparison shopping, and everyday vlogging. If this video was somewhat entertaining or educational, please consider it. Please, oh. <clears throat> hey, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Big Ball Vlogs. I do reviews, comparison shopping, and everyday vlogging. If this video was somewhat educational or entertaining, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe subscribing to the channel for new videos when I post them. So um, this is more like a, an everyday vlog video. Um, it's not a review. Um, and it's based on something I found in my email a couple of days ago. It had to be like December 26th, December 27th. Maybe today's December 27th. Can't remember. But um, pretty much I was going through my email trying to find an update on the new drone that I had reserved from Skydio, the Skydio R2. I had one of those registration numbers or one of those reservation numbers that started with a six. So I was supposed to be one of the guys that got the first ones, but I guess they weren't able to fulfill it. Um, but anyway. Instead of finding that, I found an email from the FAA that said the remote ID proposal is here. Um, and I kind of read just the, the you know, the one page email and I thought I got the gist of it, but I didn't want to go over to the FAA website and download a 300 page, 300 page uh, proposal, read through it and, and I guess kind of determine what this was actually uh, attempting to do. So I waited, I fell back, I waited for a couple of days and um, I waited for a guy who I know does excellent reviews on uh, drone regulations, his name is 51 Drones, to kind of explain what was going on. And after hearing his explanation, I was on point about what the FA wants to do with this new remote ID. Now, I know a lot of guys have been pro-drone, pro-FAA, and they say, well, you know, the FAA is just trying to stay ahead of, you know, bad things. And 51 Joe kind of agrees. The FAA is just trying to make the airspace safer. Um, but my opinion and the reason that I kind of drifted away from drones is the fact that the FAA is also making it more difficult for recreation, recreational hobbyists to want to or even have a drone and fly it legally. So for me, um, I was shocked to find out after, I think sometime last year, the FAA um, changed gears and put out some new regulations which said you might have to take a test and you also had to get authorization for flying in a controlled airspace. A controlled airspace is defined as like a five mile bubble around a towered uh, airport. And a lot of people were upset about that because at the time they did not have the LANIC, LANSIC, um, communication system up and running so that literally grounded people until the FAA caught up with that system so that you could communicate with the uh, airline control or the air the air tower or the FAA and fly legally now if you didn't want to do it yes you could have gone off and fly uh, and flown illegally um, at the risk of getting caught or for some reason busted because this is also um, a bunch of regulations that are designed to kind of allow law enforcement to get involved too. And they're trying to educate law enforcement on, you know, the legalities of flying drones and in different spaces. Uh, it's everybody trying to work together to kind of come up with some solution to keep the airspace safe and also keep hobbyists happy and Part 107 uh, uh, certificate owners happy too. So with that said, I know a lot of people are upset. So I get this new email. I just ordered this new drone and I'm reading all of these regulations about this remote ID. I'm just, I mean, I literally, not literally, but I'm about to pay for, if I got a call yesterday, $1,300 plus for this new drone. But now I got this email that is explaining something that I think may make me want to change my mind about buying this new drone. Um, so to break it down to its Simplest form, if, if I understand this correctly, based on you know my interpretation of what 50 Drone Drone said, there is this new remote ID proposal that is going to roll out in the next four months, which has a specific set of requirements for any drone that is going to operate in the U.S. airspace to have this remote ID beacon. If it does not have a remote ID beacon built into it, there are three different tiers or three different structures on how you are able to fly a drone based on this new remote ID proposal. There is unlimited, um, I guess, flight restriction, unlimited flight or unlimited restriction, where if your drone is able to communicate with the FAA, the community, and possibly even law enforcement through a remote ID beacon that bounces off of a tower back to the FAA and other different servers that tells them that you're in the air and you own this drone, um, you are unlimited. Then there is limited uh, flight, I guess, for drones that do not have a remote ID beacon built into them, but they're able to communicate through the internet, through like a cell phone that's connected to the internet or a tablet that's connected to the internet. And then if the drone has neither, if they have no way of connecting because you're flying with a tablet without any type of cellular communication or a phone that it can kind of, uh, what do they call that, pair to or, or, or hot or hotspot to, 
you are limited to fly your drone in a specific area, I think what they call a FRIA, which is essentially a drone park or maybe even your local um, RC aircraft field um, because your drone cannot communicate with the FAA or the community or law enforcement. Um, and pretty much that that covers a lot of drones that have already been uh, developed up until this point, unless those drones are able to be retrofitted with a remote beacon. So let's say you cannot put a remote beacon on, but then but you can communicate through the internet, through your cell phone, like you're flying a DJI Mavic uh, original, right? The first Mavic. You are able to communicate through the internet, but it doesn't have does not have a remote beacon. Knowing DJI, and I know DJI is already on this because I read it, uh, I think sometime last year, uh, maybe even early this year, they're already th uh, putting the remote beacons into their newer drones. But if you can't do it and you can't retrofit it, now you're limited to fly in a 400 foot bubble, 400 foot up, 400 foot away from you. Um, and you know, a lot of guys um, were limited to the line of sight, which is a lot further than 400 feet. But, um, you know, that kind of takes away, again, the ability to get those cool shots that you wanted to get with your drone. They've restricted you down to only being able to fly 400 feet. Now, let's say you have a drone, and I'm, I'm not sure one of them can't pop, uh, pop up in, on top of my head right now, but let's say you have a drone that, again, you can't communicate through the internet, and you can't communicate through uh, the drone through a beacon. Now you're limited to flying a drone, a camera, in a RC flying field. Nobody buys drones to fly them in an RC flying field. They buy them to get lit, let those ultimate shots from a different angle or perspective that you can't normally get from the ground. So, the reason I'm talking about this is because, again, I'm really backing away from this drone hobby. I mean, it's just become too, I don't know, political, I mean, to be honest with you, um, to keep up with all the rules and regulations. And for me, I don't want to be uh, fined or break the law intentionally just because I want to have the latest, greatest tech. Like I said, it was even a shocker to me to find out that I needed a Part 107 to actually do drone-related videos um, because if they're monetized, because I am now, I guess, using them in a consumer way or a commercial way. Um, if I wanted to do a, a review on this phone, I don't need a Part 107, but if I want to shoot a video with a drone and then show you the image quality and monetize it, now I need a 107. So, I mean, it kind of really stirred me away from drones and into the 360 camera world. Um, but what I want to let you guys know is that even though the drone proposal was here based on that email, the FAA is looking for feedback from you, I guess, to let them know how you feel about these new regulations. And from what I have seen so far, the bees are buzzing about them. I mean, even some of the more, I guess, pro FAA um, sites that I've seen have said, what are you doing, FAA? What, what are you doing exactly with these new regulations? Um, so I think between now, I think in January, no, I think in January to about April, you have that time, that, that time span to communicate to the FAA and let them know what you feel about these regulations. Probably talk them out of implementing something that's going to totally ground any drone that has been made prior to today, uh, maybe even prior to January 1st, 2020, because it does not have a remote beacon built into it. And to my knowledge so far, maybe with DJI drones, you might be able to send it back to DJI and ask them to retrofit it with a remote beacon. But DJI is not going to do it for free and it's going to cost you. Or they're going to come out with a new drone with a remote beacon in it and ask you to buy it to, in, order, in order to be able to fly legally. So I just wanted to kind of get that out there and let you know something I read about, you know, this new drone, drone remote beacon ID thing for you guys who may not be following it. I just happened to come uh, stumble across it because I was going through my emails looking for information on a drone I had just bought. <laughs> but um, if you guys haven't heard about it, please go over to the FAA website, maybe even sign up for their emails um, so that you get, you know, some important drone information when it comes out. And if you have any comments uh, about what you think about this new regulation, this remote ID regulation, please leave it in the comments below. So, hey, thank you for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'll talk to you soon.